I'm being awarded a retrospective bronze medal from the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. I have nerves as if I'm competing. It's really strange, but it's a mixture of nerves and excitement because I think I've probably visualised that subconsciously every day from the age of probably like 16. I never ever dreamt that I would win an Olympic medal. There are cheats, there are athletes who doped. They were stripped from their medals. The medal reallocation for that fair sport, for that clean sport. This is focused on the athletes who haven't had that opportunity to celebrate it. I always used to watch the Olympics and think it looked so far removed from kind of school sports days. And these people competing at the Olympic Games almost looked like demigods chiseled out of stone. But then when I was given this javelin, I was just absolutely taken with it. I loved the feeling of throwing it and I was actually handed a javelin to take home over the school Easter holidays. I was instantly taken with how I could get this really awkward implement to fly a long way. The reason she loves the javelin, I think, is because it's almost an art form. When you get that position absolutely right, you hit that sweet spot, you know you've done it, and you know it's going to fly. And that's a pretty special feeling, and you know you did that yourself. It was just you and this spear. I remember snippets of it as if it was yesterday. In the evening, the final was at 7.20 p.m. It's gonna rain at 7.27 p.m. So I said to my coach, right, well, we've got one round, that's it. Once it starts raining, the air gets heavy, it's quite difficult to throw in those conditions. I remember us both saying, well, you know, in mid-60s, we'll win a medal. Talk of a hat to throw pretty much a world record in the final round in the last row of the competition to win the competition, in which she did. And that was, you know, I've always had respect for her, but that was, you know, massive respect because that's pretty difficult to do in difficult conditions. So it was an amazing final and it was just frustrating for me to come off the track. 38 centimetres off an Olympic medal, when actually, if you're talking about success, it was a very, very successful competition. And that's what's kind of weird in sport. Sometimes you can have an average day and win, and other times you can compete out of your skin and come forth. People ask me a lot, you know, what do you feel about the Russian athlete who cheated? And I think people find it a bit weird when I say, I don't have anything against her. And I actually feel really sorry for her that she never really got to know how good she could have been on her own terms. And I remember actually standing in the stadium watching the ceremony, kind of thinking, I'm pretty sure I should be standing on the third place rostrum. And um, I think it's that moment that you'll never get back or you can't really recreate. After 2008, having broken the British record, I thought to myself, well, you know, I've got a home Olympics to prepare for in 2012. That Olympic cycle for me was very injury prone. I had a stress fracture in my back. I obliterated my left hip. I'd partially torn an elbow ligament. In warm up for the London Olympics, I obviously threw with a bit more effort and the partial tear became a full blown rupture. 
that was the end of my Olympic dream. I first heard about being upgraded to the bronze medal from Beijing when I was driving down the M11. I got this call from my agent saying, have you heard the news? And I could barely hear him. He just said the word Maria, and then I kind of knew what he was going to say next. I don't know, it was just a whole heap of emotions. I kind of laughed, cried, and also just found it completely ridiculous that I was in my car. It was just very, very surreal. I definitely missed out on a, a lot of things, not winning a medal. I would have had more sponsorship, and I think, you know, financially, certainly, it would have made a, a big, big difference. I don't know how much difference. You can't ever put a figure on it. The biggest thing for me is just missing out on the moment at the time. I'm sure Goldie would much rather have had the medal when she should have got it in 2008. I think the next best thing is to get it in front of your own home crowd, you know, in the London Olympic Stadium at your own home sport. And I think she's bought half the, half the audience today. We are interrupting this afternoon's anniversary games to recognise and celebrate the achievements of Goldie Sayers. On behalf of the British Olympic Association, Team GB fans worldwide, and I'm sure all of you either watching on television or with us here in the stadium today, may I offer Goldie all our congratulations on her long overdue achievement. I stood at the back of the podium thinking, right, like, take it all in, take it all in, and then got really, really emotional. Really emotional. Athletics, women's javelin throw, Goldie Sayers, bronze. Sport has definitely shaped me as a person. I think it's just taught me that you can achieve, I don't know about anything, but certainly a lot more than you can imagine.